The hitchhike sign. Extension of the thumb sometimes is called the hitchhike sign. The hitchhike sign is used in two conditions to identify a problem. The first one in radial nerve or posterior interosseous nerve palsy. The second one is the diastrophic dwarfism. An example of the radial nerve palsy is a fracture of the distal third of the humerus. An example of the posterior interosseous nerve palsy is an injury or surgery around the elbow, such as Montagia fracture. In both conditions, the fracture or the surgery may cause injury to the radial nerve or to the posterior interosseous nerve, which will result in paralysis of the wrist and finger extensors. Examine the patient before and after surgery, also before and after any close reduction of fractures around the elbow. You're going to examine the patient for the possibility of radial nerve or posterior interosseous nerve palsy. Here there is an example of how you examine the patient for posterior interosseous nerve palsy. The patient can do wrist extension, but no finger extension. The radial nerve will give innervation to the wrist extensors and to the finger extensors, and also to the thumb extensors. The posterior interosseous nerve will give finger and thumb extension only. So in your mind, if the injury is high, it's probably radial nerve, and if the injury around the elbow, it's probably a posterior interosseous nerve. The first thing I go for is for hitchhiking of the thumb. Ask the patient to hitchhike, and if he can do that, then the radial nerve and the posterior interosseous nerve are okay. If he can do that, then the posterior interosseous nerve is not okay, but the radial nerve may be okay. Then ask them to extend the rest. If they can extend the rest, then the radial nerve is okay up till the level of the posterior interosseous, and then the posterior interosseous is the one that's involved. Just remember, sometimes it's hard to distinguish if the patient have a two wrist drop or not based on the splinting, the immobilization, and also the examination. Now, if we come at the fingers and the thumb, the patient may extend the fingers by the intrinsics, which is predominantly an under nerve. So if you want to examine the fingers well, extend the wrist, then ask the patient to extend the fingers. That is more complicated than ask the patient to hitchhike, and either the patient can or the patient can't. The second condition is diastrophic dwarfism, which is enzymatic deficiency or defect. If it is enzymatic condition, then the condition probably autosomal recessive, such as vitamin D dependent records or Gaucher disease. In our case here, it is sulfate transport protein defect. So these patients have two, three things that are significant. One of them is he's a hitchhiker. He got a hitchhiker thumb and also got a cauliflower ear in addition to club foot and the others. So a hitchhiker thumb, cauliflower ear is diastrophic dysplasia. It's autosomal recessive. It involves defect 
in a sulfate transport protein. This condition usually comes in the exams and it is associated with a mutation in the DTDST gene on CH5. Thank you very much. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.